Chad, what episode is this, Chad? Chad? This is episode number 114. Chad. Wait, is that right? I think I'm sorry, 15. I'm sorry. 100 and, this is episode number 115. Should we take two? It's another F. And I can't keep track of these fucking F numbers. You know what I'm saying? SC 115. I mean, Slappercast 115. Live in your living room or your workspace or your yeah. car. Yeah. Or wherever you watch Slappercast. Yeah. The only time we're invited in your yeah. home. Truly. <laughs> so what's new? So exciting. I think there's a little announcement. A little announcement. Yeah. Chat, have a baby? Oh. No. No. No, we'll, we'll do that next week. So we're going to have a, uh, yeah, we've sent our tracks off for our new record to be mastered. What? Oh, Just, yeah. what? Why the speed? Why so fast? Well, let me tell you why. Because we're finished. We're done. We're done, and we've had it with this record. I want to start the new one. Wait, so no, no. Yes, Number first. Sorry, I was listening to the to the tracks that Paul sent over, and uh, what, one of the tracks that we do in particular. I was listening to it, and it's it's it sounds so different now because we've because we've taken it out, we've played it so many times now since we've recorded it, and the live version nearly sounds like a new song. Because we've been we've been playing it and just adding, hey, what if we put it? Okay, this so that's why we sent this off to be mastered now. Because if we don't, we'll take it back and we'll re-record everything again. And nobody's got that kind of time. Uh, we're all we're all going to celebrate our golden years, you know, uh, in the studio. So uh, so we sent them off. We uh, they're being mastered by a young Christopher Longwood here in Houston, Texas, who's uh, who's worked with just. You know, just just artists from all over the world, and this guy is he's 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 quite spectacular. If you've heard our Christmas song, or um, or our fairy tale in New York, which our other Christmas song, um, he he did the mastering on that, and that was uh, you know, put the sparkle on it, if you will. And um, we've we've even got a title for the record. What is it? What's the title? Mm-hmm. What's it called? Blagmatic. Black man. What does that mean? Yeah. So, so we're, we're uh, yeah. So records, records done. So um, I think what we're going to do now is we're going to, we're going to start talking about reward music and start, you know, kind of trying to, tr- trying to introduce our, our gang to the, to reward music and the, the pluses of becoming a member over there. Why we're a member over here. We're, Reward music is going to be our, you know, our umbrella, you know, of content. I mean, just everything, everything that we do is going to, we're going to start, we're going to start there. It's just a, it's a, it's a platform we really believe in. We want to see it. We want to see it grow. We want to be there in the ground floor, you know, yeah. pushing, pushing the music and the artists first versus sending you, you know, jock straps made in China that were designed by, you know, you know, some I don't know. So you know we're 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 stuck with ads and just content, video content, and just you know quizzes and top five favorite humming noise. You know, so all this crap, all this fluff that you have to dig through to 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 get to you know to get to music and to get to what's going. On. So it, reward music kind of cuts out. Cuts out the, you know, trims the fat as they will and just leaves the, leaves the content. We're going to be opening up pre-sales on our reward music site pretty soon. And uh, so that's when you're ready to, to purchase a record, that's where you'll go. So, and when you, like anything there, if you're, if you're subscribing to our monthly subscription, which we call Blagatron, or you're just buying a song, or you're buying, you're buying your, your, uh, your, pre, your pre-sale of Blagmatic, all that money comes to us. There's no... Reward music does not take a cut of anything, anything. You know, there's just one flat monthly fee that we pay them, and that's it. So, just you, you can go there and and the peace of mind knowing that you're actually all your money is going directly to us, apart from credit card processing fees. Right. Yeah, so that's a that's a good thing. Yeah, it's it, it is especially now that we're booking shows, you know, uh, all across the country. We're um, we're looking into uh, doing. Actually, we're just talking about 
You're back. Right, right before we hit record, we were talking about hitting the road and doing a, actually a couple of longer stints than we've done before. Um, in that we're you know going to cover a whole lot a whole lot of new territory. The the record and the reward music and stuff like that just couldn't come at a better time for us because we're you know we're relying on that on getting out because we've been off <laughs> for for a year. We've been sitting at home for a year doing nothing but recording and you know doing doing all that stuff and it's just um it's been traumatizing in that there's there's been no ground covered so we're stuck and it, and now with you know I'm calling these clubs and and they yeah 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 we'd love to have you except we don't know at what capacity we're going to be open how many people we're allowed in if we're allowed to open you know we just went through that with the Continental Club and um Good time and Pete over there had just been put through the ringer as far as paying fees, buying licenses, get, getting food in, you know, adhering to every single whim of the of the you know whatever the the, the rule was of that week, and spending all kinds of money and then sh- essentially shutting down again because no, we want more money and you have to do even more after you've done every. So we've been through the same thing in that we've been canceling shows booking them, rebooking them, rescheduling for different times and stuff like that. And it's just been, you know, it's been as, as, as torturous as anything I, I think I've ever done, you know, we've ever done. This is it. So it's, it's just light at the end of the tunnel, new record, new ground cover, many, many, many new spots on the map. So we're just over the moon. Yeah. Moon. Yeah. Over. It was just, it was last Saturday. We went up to College Station a little bit early. We sat down outside at Fuego, my favorite, favorite place to go eat in College Station. And we sat there and we worked out the track listing for the record, which was really nice to be able to finally do that. And uh, so that was, that was like one step further to, you know, we, we named the record and then getting, actually getting the track listing nailed down was, that was another thing that was like, okay, this is really happening now. <laughs> that was, that was pretty exciting. Yeah, it's also it's also strange too because we're we we are recording vinyl. We're gonna have a we're gonna have an LP as well, and it was strange because you know on a you know most of the stuff is and I don't know the percentages. I would guess seventy percent is going to be downloads. So in that regard, you don't have to you don't have to worry about the listing. However, with an LP, you do because there's side one and side two. So we're looking at it as three old guys going. I wonder what track three, wait, wait, where's the hit? Where's the, you know, I remember, I I thought I remembered, I could be well wrong, but I thought it used to be track seven was the the big one on on the records, but I was, uh, I was met with resistance on that one. But it's when you have those rec, when you have those titles and you want the A and the B side and you want it to look good, you know, Eric, go ahead. I think it's, I think it's track two is the hit. Usually. Is it? Back in the day, it might have changed okay. come the eighties. But back in the sixties and seventies, usually the second track was the was the hit, or uh, if it was a title song, sometimes it was the title track. Although there's some variations to that, but um, but yeah, it's going to be great. I can't. Uh, hopefully, we do a a swirly vinyl. Hopefully, we do a swirly color vinyl. That seems to be the way uh, everybody's going these days. A two color a two color vinyl, so it'll look cool playing. And um, probably we'll probably include a download link in the record, probably, which will be fun for people. Yeah. And you can even, you know, I have a couple of records hanging on my wall that I that I that I frame. So it could be a nice piece of artwork to hang in your yeah. den or your boudoir, wherever you like to hang art in your house. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, these these LPs are so much fun to to play. You know, it's just. They were always exciting to put on as a kid because you didn't, you know, we didn't have the, the, the computer. So it was, you go to the record store and you buy a record by a band that you trust and you come home and you put this record on and just, but even to this day, putting a, putting a record on the turntable and just hearing that scratch and that hiss before the, before the track hits uh, is, is, is still, it's still just such a, and, 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 and it's, my, my CD player, tape player, and uh, um, uh, record player are are you know right beside each other. So 
that, but that, that there's something about the LP when that hisses and scratches and then that track comes on and it's up nice and loud and you're, it's just, it's, it's I, there's just nothing better. Yeah. I'm, I'm really looking forward to actually hearing us coming out of that, that device for the first time. <laughs> that's uh finally, <laughs> that's going to be really Thanks. cool. Cause we never, obviously we never done vinyl before we did. We didn't do a vinyl release for standards and we certainly didn't do it for live in Texas. So this is, uh, people have been asking us about this for years. I said, tell me you're going to do vinyl on the next record. So yeah, I'm, I think, I think here forward that it's going to be a given with every, every, every new release that we do. So, Everybody's doing it. If it's worthy, if it has to be worthy. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> within reason, there's going to be a lot of stuff released on reward music that will not be in, released in any physical format. You know, unless you guys, unless our, our supporters like just clamor for it, but yeah. The official records, the official studio records will all come out in vinyl. Yeah, that was that, that was the nice thing about reward music when we figured it out at, at, at the beginning um, is j just being able to post content without jumping through hoops and, and you know, and whatnot. And it's just it, it, it's boring when you go on different media sites and there's there's they've muted half of your thing because they think it's. You know, well, well, you know, yes, it is a cover song. However, we paid for that cover song. We've, we, you know, we bought the license for it. We've, you know, we've, we're not trying to steal music or content, you know, like a lot, a lot of people we know as part-time professionals. The thing I like about getting away from Facebook and YouTube and all these, all these things is, is the, the algorithms that they do to, you know, they, they want us to pay for everything, you know, it doesn't matter if you already deliberately, you know, specifically told them you want to get updates from us. They're not going to show them to you unless, unless we boosted the post or something like that. And so even then, sometimes it, it, a lot of times it doesn't work. Well, that's, that's the thing. I have no problem paying for it as long as it works. It doesn't work. We've taken out the ads. We've done the, the footwork and the homework and the back work and the, you know, trying to find the, the avenue to the, you know, like we've, uh, by the time you hear this, we'll have played Dallas. It was our first time in Dallas for a long, long time. And uh, I guarantee you, today, Tuesday, you're going to hear, oh, oh, I didn't know you were in Dallas. Why were you know? Well, yeah, of course you didn't, because you've got better things to do than sit in a bloody computer all day and, you know, flip through the, you know, 800 bands you like on this platform or whatever. Well, we've, we can't, nor, you know, I mean, there's, there's a, there's a, a mailing, we got a mailing list. We have a, it's pretty, pretty extensive, you know, but, you know, people, mute it because you know when when you when you're forced to take a year off you're silent and you're you know there, there's not a lot going on so we're not going to post and say hey by the way you know we had a we had a really good day in the studio and you <sighs> boring so we're we're at the mercy of the the like chad said the algorithms of these people that are just trying to squeeze every single penny out of uh, and, and you really you have to spend an exorbitant amount of money to to get to you know, to get to, 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 to where you can focus and zoom in and, you know, get that target audience, you know, you, you just can't do it. So, so, uh, college station was insane. I was getting back to yeah. like old college station days. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, that was insane. We uh, celebrated, uh, Ellen's uh, birthday, uh, Ellen and Brian Reeves came out and we just seeing that whole room jump up and down was just you know, like Chad said, that was early days of Bannons. That was when we first started. That we, that was a, that was a regular occurrence, and uh, those kids went nuts. Very very fun. Yeah, it was funny because uh, you know they said, "Oh my God, Friday night was so was so busy," and it was like nine thirty on on Saturday. I was like, "Man, this place is dead." And then I turned around and I turned back around, and the fucking place was full within like fifteen minutes. I was like, "Holy smokes, where did all these people come from?" That was parents weekend, right? Yeah. I thought it was like ring, I thought it was ring ceremony weekend or something like that. Whatever that means. That's the same thing. It be parents ring ceremony. Yeah? I think, yeah, the rings happened recently as well. But yeah, what's funny, parents weekend is always really interesting because people, a lot of people actually bring their parents to the show. And uh, sometimes that can affect, I think that's one of the reasons why it took a while for the crowd to pick up because everybody was out to dinner with their family, right? But uh once it was particularly the second set I and mean, the first set was packed as well. But the second set, I think some of the parents may, maybe went back to the hotel rooms, the kids come back and they're like, ah, and that, that's, that's what we've seen happen there for, for almost two decades now. 
I mean, the, the, it's so it's so much fun there when, when the when the when the Aggies are, you know, well oiled. And a shout out to the to the staff. They were they were under understaffed and they they held their own, you know, admirably. And I, I know it's a tough night for them and the lines were long, but at least the kids are being entertained while that while they were waiting. And the staff did a great job of trying to keep up with with uh, with everybody. That, that was insane. The, the amount of glassware on every single table, on every surface, every imaginable place. If you stood still too long, you were going to have glassware piled on your on your noggin. It was insane. And because they, they, they had no, I mean, I think he said three people called in that night. Three people. So there's going to be uh, going to be uh, looking for three new bartenders at at <laughs> O'Bannon's Tap House and Conversation. And those, yeah, they were in. I mean, just in hell. Chris Steele, the owner, was bartending, and he held, I kid you not, the, as you're looking at the bar, as you walk in the door, he held half the bar, you yeah. know, on, on, on the left-hand side on his own. And and that's, that's that's that you know, people will say, well, that, that's, you know, yeah, that's that's kind of impressive. It's more impressive when you know that he matched everybody in there drink for drink. That's when, that's when you take your hat off. No, I'm kidding. He didn't. He yeah, didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not like you know, it's not like they're pouring you know they're not cracking open bud lights they're like actually having to pour because it is a draft house so they are pouring drafts if you get a guinness you have to have to make it wait although they had a they had a guinness tap on our side of the bar that they were making those drinks where you drop the the shots into them i'm not going to say the name out loud because i think it's i hate that fucking name but um the guinness seemed to come out like quicker like it wasn't like you weren't waiting for the for the phone you don't yeah, have to wait yeah, for it. They were pour, and, and the glasses are a little bit smaller. And that thing was flowing all night long. So basically you get Jameson and Bailey's in a, in a, in a shot glass, you drop it into your Guinness and you, you're supposed to, show, which is, you know, yeah, the name is offensive, but to, 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 to drink alcohol like that is, is even more offensive. <laughs> I think, you know, to, to, to whatever they are, a shot, however much they cost you just to put that much alcohol down your gullet in two seconds is, is a, Less than two seconds is pretty, uh, you, know, you know. It's funny. It's funny to me. Like, so the, the fans who want to who who want to do it, it's been a while since since somebody's brought a round of those things up. The the drink which shall not be named. But I'm always like, oh god, here we go again. But I I, I got both both Chris Buckley and I were pretty good at knocking those things back pretty pretty fast. Which was funny to me. There was one time we did that at College Station and round of them knocked it back. And I put the glass down before anybody else. And one of the guys goes, oh, I didn't know it was a competition. And he goes, he tries to get another round. I'm like, no, 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 I'm out. Stop. Especially now after after COVID, I'm like the whole idea of taking a shot glass and dropping it into a, a gla- another glass and drinking it just sounds totally unsanitary and gross to me. It's alcohol. It'll kill. Yeah. Alcohol. It'll kill the- yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll kill everything. Whatever. You're supposed to gargle bleach and that, that gets, yeah. gets rid of it. <laughs> So, yeah, some, yeah. some Jack and any brought, brought me a shot because I think because I don't know how he remembered me, but we were standing, I was standing outside at the last break and just talking with the doorman and this guy came up with a flowered lay around his neck. And I, me being the jackass that I am said, Hey, someone finally got laid tonight. <laughs> and the guy was like, Hey, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And he was fucking shit house. And I don't know why they let him in, but they let him in. And then he bought me that shot at the end of the night and I couldn't, I don't even know what it was. I took a sip and I was like, that's, I think it was Sambuca, like the, like the black Sambuca. Oh, yeah, yeah, Which yeah. Is, the coffee, is that the coffee I guess one? so. It just tastes like licorice to me. And I was like, I don't even want that. Yeah. So. I took a yeah. whiff of it. I thought it was Jaeger, you know. It Jaeger. If it was Jaeger. I would have been okay with it, but it was, uh, I think really? it was Sambuca, yeah. Yeah, me and Jaeger, <laughs> we get along just fine. Ugh. It's like yeah, they're they're, they're, they're truly there's some really really generous crew up there. They're always everybody's okay. Can we get you around the drinks? Get me around. The drinks. No, no, thank you. No, we're you know we got a lot of work to do. Speaking with our friend Brent, uh, you know, you know, w- when you think of the meticulous, you know, s- some of the some of the intricate parts that we're playing at some of the speeds that we're playing. Put a couple of drinks on top of that, and then you end up not, you know, I mean, you're really not even able to hit the strings properly on the guitar. So, uh, 
it, it was it was funny listening to him talk about those because this guy is a is is an extremely talented musician and just just so much fun to talk to. But hearing his take on what we're who is Brentwood, we're gonna we're, we'll explain soon and more information coming on that. But just when you when you listen to the speed that we're playing and then you try to add just a couple of shots at the beginning and a couple of shots after that, it's not going to really translate that one. <laughs> I remember Eric's yeah, first yeah. couple of gigs with us. I'm, I'm going to hold off on the cocktails until after we play. I've got a, I've got quite a lot on my plate. Like, yeah. Yeah, you do. Way different than a derailers um, gig where you just put the same thing, every single song and you just kind of turn off the brain and, and do whatever. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. You know, we don't, and still, even to this day, it's like it's maybe one drink at the last set and then afterwards it's fine. But, yeah, it's still such high energy and I want to keep it that way. I know, and I know that the whole band feels that same way. So, yeah. Yeah. We, Especially since frequently in our, at our shows, you know, that's when things really start getting great is like towards the end of the night, depending where we are. And if, I don't understand these bands that, that I know it's it's for a lot of bands. It's just the way it is. Like by the time you get to the last set, everybody's. Everybody's just barely hanging on and white knuckling it, but because uh, they're all drinking during the show. Yeah, exactly. And it's why would you do that? I mean, I know why they do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're you're missing out. Yeah, on, yeah people on buying what, drinks and whatever. So yeah, just think. I think what what could happen if you, if if you kept your shit together and, and you can actually play off an energetic crowd. Yeah, all you know, relatively sober. It, it's a whole different ball game. And I got to say it too, Patrick, that first set that you, that you put together was pretty outstanding. So it definitely set the tone for the rest. I mean, the second set was great too, but just because the crowd was, you know, going crazy, but musically that first set, I was like, Oh man, it's on. This is going to be. Fun. That's right. You said that. We, so we got we got to save that set list. Yeah. 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 I remember you said that. It's pretty, I threw it out. <laughs> no, no, we haven't. Yeah. That was, that, that was, that was really fun. That was, a, that was a, um, we're sitting with Greg and Sharon Fugate, who made the trip to uh, made the pilgrimage to College Station, and uh, sitting with them. And I was, I was, uh, I was uh, th- listening to. We added a few songs. We added a song that we haven't played in a long, long time for Ellen uh, Aunt Reeves on her birthday, twenty sixth, twenty seventh birthday. I'm not sure, but she had uh, she she had asked us to play. Some say the devil is dead, and we added that one. We uh, we put. A man from Omaha in front of it. And then we also did a sleepless Rover for Sharon. Uh, we did our closer early because uh, it, uh, it looked like Greg wanted to go and have, you know, have some horseplay in the, in the hotel room. So <laughs> we, uh, a little bit early and uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Special hug. Um, mm-hmm. So we did a little bit early, but it, you know, and sometimes we, you know, we're just talking a second ago about bands that, kind of lose their lose their grip on the show by the end of the the end of the night if which of, often is the case if people walk in to your show and you're laying back and you're yawning um you're you're you know going through the motion you th- th- I guarantee you that group of people is not coming back to see you you got something left in the tank and you're still putting it out you're still you know laying it down you're going to you're going to gain you're going to gain some 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 new friends and can you can you guys think of a, a show that you were really excited to go see and you went and it was one of those things where they were really drunk at the end of the night you're like come on I can't think of one where I walk you know where where I I, I can th- think of bands that I walked in on I was kind of like you're 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 doing this in public <laughs> you know it's kind of like you know you know kind of like somebody cleaning their ears you know in, in on a stage it's like, it's like Nobody wants to see or hear this. Don't, you know, so I, I walked in on gigs like that, but I've, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, when, when we get a night off, we go see a band. I'm 99.9% sure that the band's going to deliver. And I'm usually not disappointed because it's, you know, it's so few and far between. Eric, have you had the, you know, the band that we're talking about? Um, yeah, no, I mean, I saw, I can't think of any band that I was just like, oh, God, what the – I know I've probably seen one, but when I did see um, – I saw Matthew Sweet and Soul Asylum down in Florida when I was going to school down there. And Matthew Sweet's band came on, and they were they were great. They were the opening band. Maybe maybe kind of a quasi-co-headliner like thing. 
And then Soul Asylum came out. And I knew from just talk on the street that Dave Perner, the lead singer, was kind of an alcoholic, kind of a drunk. And uh, sure enough, he came out on stage staggering, like like legs kind of crossing over each other, kind of a stagger. And I thought for a second, I thought, oh, this is going to be awful. Surprisingly enough, knew all the words, sang in tune, was energetic on stage, wasn't quite the wasn't quite the uh, the train wreck that he made himself out to be. You could tell he was fucked up, but he was still he still delivered um, the show. The other thing I too I watched when I first time I saw Cheap Trick, which was kind of later in life, um, a band called Guided by Voices opened up for them, and uh, and uh, uh, that particular show made me hate Guided by Voices with a passion because they wouldn't get off the fucking stage and make room for the real band to play. As it turns out, that was actually, I didn't know this, but it was a co-headlining tour. So each band did 90 minutes. And I was like, and actually me and I got a lot of folks in the audience were like, get off the stage. But anyway, it's a whole other side story. But their bass player, I watched him drink almost a fifth of Jack Daniels. And he got worse and worse and worse as the show went on. The singer was also cracking beers left and right, which Chad shaking his head like he knows what I'm talking about. Like that was part of the shtick almost was kind of to see how drunk that band could get. And all their songs are like two minutes long, maybe three minutes long. They're not huge, like epic things. They're like really short kind of pop songs. But to watch this bass player just kind of like just disintegrate on stage, like to go from this to just like, you know, barely yeah. hanging on was just like, I, 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 I came to. Yeah. Like, Right, I know. Yeah, Bob. That 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 is that is their shtick, unfortunately. And it's Bob Pollard is pretty good at keeping his shit together. But yeah, he will he will keep pounding the beers the entire show. He'll start before the show, and he says like, "This is part of the show. <laughs> if you don't like it, that's too bad." Because he's had he's had the record companies like you know have talks with him like, "Could you maybe cut back on the booze a little bit?" Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I get you know, sure, but just um, just I mean. Beer is one thing because some people can drink a shit ton of beer and they'll be fine. It's just like it's water with a little bit. Of, and I think it was Bud Light or something like that. It wasn't like it was like a heavy, you know, like a thing. Or maybe it was Budweiser. But watching that yeah. player just pull off that Jack Daniels bottle was just kind of sad, actually, to watch. You're just like, really? This yeah. is what we're doing? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. It reminds me, yeah. too, of when we saw the Pogues. We, uh, it was back in 2009. We saw them twice. I mean, once in Austin and once in Houston. Uh, they were both pretty good shows. So the Austin show was kind of marred by the fact that we were, it was raining. <laughs> it started raining on us while we were standing there. Uh, but I remember the Houston we show being be. really, really good. And uh, I think we heard, didn't, didn't we hear that that they they were trying to moderate Shane's drinking during that tour? What I had heard was that there was a piece of paper that was signed that if you're too hammered to drunk to to if you're too hammered to do the show you don't get paid. So Shane was an altar boy apparently. Yeah. On the, <laughs> that's but what he, I had he, heard. Yeah, and he did both shows. He did have a bottle of whiskey in his hand by the end of the show, but for the for most of the show before that he he was just at the mic doing his you know doing his thing and he was great. Um, yeah, I mean that whole band drinks so yeah obviously that was going on but they they did keep it together and I, I thought i thought the both shows were great again but that that houston show at house of blues was was amazing yeah yeah and i saw shane with the popes uh, in austin as well um a while before that and the rumor was that he wasn't showing up and the that tour you know he'd already he'd already cashed a check before he'd st set foot on a plane so we were at the mercy of how does he feel that night? How much did he have the night before and stuff? So, so the rumors were, we're standing outside of the place. I forget the name of the place. Uh, Eric, you'd probably know it. Um, uh, Z L Zona Rosa. Is that right? Yeah. La Zona yeah. Rosa. Yeah. La, La, I think that's what it, what it was. Yeah. So we went, uh, we, you know, so we're not standing out and, and, and the, the, the gossip, the the knitting circle had started. Oh, he's not here. He's not here. No, I'm just, yeah, we just got word. He's not. Tickets bought. Standing outside, and I'm just gritting my teeth, just going, man. You you know, you got a show. And I mean, I and I would have stayed for the Popes anyway because they were they were they were they were pretty pretty smoking at the time. 
And, uh, but we went in there and he was in, I mean, he, he nailed every single song. He just, Sh- Shane, the band, band were good too, but Shane, I, I, I wish I could tell you what his opening line was, but I don't want to piss anybody off. But my, but he, uh, just pure, pure Shane McGann. Just remind me in the van tomorrow when we're going, going north. Remind me to get the opening line. But uh, yeah, well, we pl- we played with those band, and it's usually the bass player. We 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 know this. It's usually the bass player that's the first one to 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 get. But this this one gig in particular up on the east coast, and uh, the bass player had had one of the Brian May curly chords, but it was a uh, more like a patch cable. So he was how could yeah. could barely, and didn't play a note didn't or I mean if he played a note he didn't play it at the he probably played at the end of the song when the band stopped and then he'd start again when they you know it's just it was it was just comical and staggering all over the place and would just keep walking towards the front of the stage and the cable that was this big would just keep popping out of the out of the rig and we just watched yeah. the sh- just and and this band was just the the drummer. I, if I remember correctly, was adequate. The rest of the band were okay, and he was awful. And it was just—it was one of those—it was one of those situations where you you <clears> go, "I'm going to do these guys a favor and kill them all." You know, just go up and oh, just, just that that drummer actually was really good. I remember that was—I'm uh, remembering this now. He was a really cool guy, and he was a great—he was a group, best musician in that band, and he was pissed off about the bass player because he came on after us. I mean, he came after the. After the show, he came up to us and said, man, I'm sorry about that, man. Go out. But I just remember watching his face every time the bass player's lead would fly out of the amp. And he, was, he was just back there fucking steaming the whole time. But yeah, and the, the bass player, I don't want to say to his credit, but he did go up to the singer at one point. He goes, hey, uh, I think I might be too drunk to play <laughs> or something like that. You, you couldn't hear what he was saying, but you could hear the singer's response like, yeah, I know. We, we, got, we have to finish the show, buddy. It's all right. Just... I got this. <laughs> and to their credit, they actually did finish the show. They they, they did their job, but yeah, the, it was he, he was completely useless. It, it was crazy. I think the curly the, you saw that cable he had looks like something he must. I'm guessing he forgot his actual cable, and that was the only thing they could find, which didn't make any sense. I mean, I would have loaned him my cable if they had asked. Yeah. So we uh, we've had those we've had those great those those little wonderful moments. We've we've been we've been very fortunate in our in our history that you know we just kind of keep it together on stage and even at the even at the worst times we've we've had uh we've you know we've been able to 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 stay afloat so i'm trying to think i'm trying to think of the closest we've ever come to just completely train wrecking with somebody i guess i think it was must have been early on one of those people who was who got fired for drinking too much yeah we had the, yeah there was that too but again it, it was it was uh there's one in uh, we it reminds me we need to do a show where we completely change the name and the situation and we just 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 lay this stuff out because it's just it's gold. But I remember one person in particular who 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 would drink behind our backs because we had said, look, we just gotta you know we're we're doing this you know this is two or three times a week now. You know, we're starting to, you know, so, you, you know, you just got to keep it together. So he, he he would go out to his his vehicle and drink on the brakes. And it and it's summertime and it's warm and it's so is the alcohol, you know, so drinking warm, you know, drinks in your car on a break, you know, and um, coming in. And then, you know, like we said, the show deteriorating and, and, and rapidly, too, because I'm not I don't drink. So so, so you notice this. Yeah, you know, but that same person playing with another friend's band at a much different time. I saw what happens when the band drinks, and there's no having to leave the club to go drink warm beer. You can drink cold beer in the thing, and and, and all night, and as much as you want, because the rest of the band's going to kind of follow suit. So I saw these at uh, uh, much like the, the the time in Florida where the drummer played the song. But he changes the feel, so he takes the swing, dan, dick, a ding, dan, dick, a ding, dan, dick, a ding, dan, takes the swing out of it, to dan, 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 and just makes it straight. So, uh, so he's playing this song, and the the band is, I think, I think it's five piece or six piece band. They're follow, supposed to be following this drummer. Well, he's playing straight on a song that's got a swing, 
because he's just hammering. He wants to just go one, two, one, two, instead of one, two, one, two, one. one. He, and it was hysterical because the band is now playing one, two, one, two, one, two. <laughs> but they want to play the swing. And it's just, and they're, I think two of them stayed, stayed in the front, like, oh, here we go. While the other one, three or four members were going, what the fuck are you doing? Like, swing, no, 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 two, one, no, no. Everybody's berating him. And he's just got, I got it. I got it, man. One, two, one, two, one, two. And it was just comical to watch this thing just in front of your eyes. Just, just like, just, just take wet sand and just watch it pour through your hand. That's exactly what was happening in this city. It was the greatest. It, 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 and it, it, it's not funny at the moment because you're, because you, you know how everybody's, you know, you know what kind of a punch in the balls and face, whatever that is. To have that happen, but the, it, that time in Florida too, they, they were playing that swing song, and the the drummer who who made sure to tell us thirteen times before the gig and eighty four times after the gig, oh, I'm I'm not a drummer. I go, trust me, pal. We know <laughs> he couldn't play any kind of swing. Everything was done. So all this all this six eight kind of feel is done to this kind of stiff, rigid one two one two one two one two, and it was just hilarious. And those guys opened up with our best you know, our, our, our bestseller on our record, exactly how we do it. Go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We thought we'd, you know, show you our version of it. I go, is that your version? Did you really learn? <sighs> yeah. New episode. You cracked me up about those guys. They were all, they all seem to be kind of delusional about their love to degree of skill. Like, yeah, we're awesome. And there's that one guy who, I think he was playing harmonica or something. He had a beard. And, uh, he, he, I was like, I was being polite afterwards, like, hey, uh, great job. You know, he goes, he goes no, nah, man, we suck. <laughs> he was the only one who was actually completely honest about what did just happen. That's that, that's a note to, you know, if, if you're playing in a rock and roll band and you're, you know, you're touring, uh, one thing you might want to remember and what we've learned the hard way is if a band is going to open for you and they're a local band, have them open for you after you play your show. <laughs> reason i say that is because nine times out of ten they're babysitters and parents and the people that come to see the the show are going to be gone by the time your your set starts because they're too hammered to get their shit off the stage they're too hammered to understand you know let's not play these guys that have just come you know they've just driven you know two thousand miles to come play your you know, your club to 11 people. Let's uh, let them play their version of the songs that, that, that you, that you've been playing in the club for, you know, seven nights a week, you know, on open mic night, let's let them. So note to self, note to, note to rock and roll bands. And another note, yeah. no yeah. monikers, W-H-O-R-E monikers, don't bring them unless she's got mm -hmm. a younger sister. <laughs> What do we got coming up on the calendar after this this next next week? I guess we have lots coming off. off. Well, the next the next thing on our on our docket, we've got the Dogs and Hogs Medieval Bike Rally, uh, Biker Bash at the uh, the Texas Ren Fair Campgrounds. Oh yeah, and then Scotty's Saloon in Richmond, which we mentioned last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and and, and uh, we're gonna push you towards our reward music, Blackmatic release. Yes, coming up. Woo. I'm excited. Yeah, I cannot yeah. wait. To hear that. Yeah, we're we're meeting with uh, our friend who's doing the album artwork. We're meeting with him this Monday, so the the day before you see the show comes out, we will have already met with him, and we will have played in Arlington and Grapevine up in the Dallas area mm -hmm. for the first time in ages, um, which is it's going to be great. Chris Buckley is playing this weekend with us, so we'll we'll have some stories about that next week. So hope you hope you join us again. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, yeah. Yeah, thanks. And also we've got uh, for our, our Austin Round Rock crew, we've got a couple of dates coming up in um, back at the Cork and Barrel. Yep. Uh, just keep 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 your eye on those dates. And I know that there's a, we, a lot of people have been asking us about those dates. And last time we were out, a lot of people were camping and whatnot. Uh, get there early for this show because uh, there's we, we're, we're going to be we're going to have a couple of surprises. We have a couple of things up our sleeves as, as usual. But um it's, it's going to be some really fun stuff. So you'll, you'll, you'll most yeah. likely hear about it. You will, 
hear about it first on reward music and whatnot. But, uh, you know, again, thanks for traveling and coming to see us. And thanks for telling people about us and pushing this thing around. You know, we're, uh, we, we, we certainly appreciate it. We, we, we're also going to have a couple of guests coming up. Uh, we've been, uh, been spending a lot of time getting this, getting these mixes out. And now that they're out, we're going to, you know, bring some guests in. We're going to have some interviews coming up and a lot of fun stuff. So check it out. Thanks for listening yeah. and right. thanks for tuning in. Thank you. <laughs>